Hi guys, welcome to the new section, Metasploit Components and Environment Configuration. In this section we will start with structure and components of Metasploit, then move on to playing around with MSF console, and finally see variables and updating the Metasploit. Now we move on to the first video of this section, structure and components of Metasploit. In this video we are going to take a look at anatomy of the Metasploit, and then learn its components in detail. The best way to learn the structure of Metasploit is to browse through its directory. When using a Kali Linux, the Metasploit framework is usually located at pathcd user share metasploit framework. At a broad level, the Metasploit framework structure, which is shown here. The Metasploit framework has a very clear and well-defined structure, and the tools within the framework are organized based on their relevance in various phases of the penetration testing lifecycle. The Metasploit framework has various component categories based on their role in the penetration testing phases. The first is auxiliaries. Auxiliary modules in the Metasploit framework are nothing but small pieces of code that are meant to perform a specific task. There are 1000 plus auxiliary modules spread across 18 categories in the Metasploit framework. This table shows various categories of auxiliary modules present in the Metasploit framework. Don't get overwhelmed with the number of auxiliary modules present in the Metasploit framework. You may not need to know each and every module individually, you just need to search the right module in the required context and use it accordingly. We will now see how to use an auxiliary module. We will use many different auxiliary modules as and when required. However, let's get started with a simple example. Open up the terminal window and start Metasploit using the command msf console. Now select the auxiliary module with this command. Here our auxiliary has been selected to perform a port scan against the target system. Using show options, list down all parameters that need to be configured in order to run this auxiliary module. Using the set our hosts command, set the IP address of our target system. 192.168.0.100 Here our host has been set. Now for setting port. Use the set ports command. Select the port range you want to scan on your target system. We have set port 100. We can set the port up to 10,000. Using the run command, execute the auxiliary module with the parameters configured earlier. You can see that all the commands has been executed. Now let's see exploits. These are the most important part of the Metasploit framework. An exploit is the actual piece of code that will give you the required access to the target system. There are 2,500 plus exploits spread across more than 20 categories based on platform that exploit is supported. This table shows the various categories of exploits available in the Metasploit framework. Now let's move on to the next topic, encoders. In any given real world penetration testing scenario, it's quite possible that our attempt to attack the target system would get detected or noticed by some kind of security software present on the target system. This is exactly when encoders come to the rescue. The job of the encoders is to obfuscate our exploit and payload in such a way that it goes unnoticed by any of the security systems on the target system. This table shows the various encoder categories available in the Metasploit framework. Let's look at the various payload categories available in the Metasploit framework. To start with, singles. These are sometimes also referred to as inline or non-staged payloads. Payloads in this category are completely self-contained units of the exploit and require shell code. Which means they have everything that is required to exploit the vulnerability on the target. Stages. There are certain scenarios where the size of the payload matters a lot. A payload with even a single byte extra may not function well on the target system. 
The stage's payload come handy in such a situation. The stage's payload simply sets up a connection between the attacking system and the target system. Stages. Once the stage type payload has set up a connection between the attacking system and the target system, the stage's payloads are then downloaded on the target system. They contain the required shellcode to exploit the vulnerability on the target system. To obtain a reverse TCP shell from a comprised Windows system, use this command. Use payload, windows, shell, reverse underscore TCP. Now you can go to show options to show all the options available. First we need to set the L host, then we need to set the L port. So set L host 192.168. Dot one, dot two. As you can see, it has been set. Now we need to set L port using the command shown here. Nice, you can see that it has been set too. This shows a sample payload that can be used to obtain a reverse TCP shell from a compromised Windows system. Next, we will see is post. Once we have successfully exploit a vulnerability and get into our target system, post exploitation modules may help us in these ways. Escalate user privileges, dump OS credentials, steal cookies and saved passwords, get key logs from the target system, execute PowerShell scripts, make our access persistent. Here the table shows the various categories of post modules available in the Metasploit framework. The Metasploit framework has more than 250 such post-exploitation utilities and scripts.